Hello, this is Christopher Poche from the University of Louisville Libraries. In this and one companion video, I will present you with some helpful tips for how to search the library's databases and catalog for scholarly articles and books for your research paper in Humanities 320. This research paper requires you to find three secondary sources on various topics involving utopian and dystopian works and traditions. In this video, I will focus on the nature of scholarly resources, developing a search strategy for finding those resources, and applying that strategy to library databases. The library is the best place for finding credible, high-quality resources, including news and magazine articles, and especially scholarly resources. Before going into the details of using the library, Let's discuss the nature of scholarly resources, which will be the focus of your research. First, let's look at an example of a scholarly research article, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, Reassessing Her Significance for Feminism and Economics, by Falguni A. Sheff and Robert E. Prash. What features of this resource identify it as scholarly? One such feature is the abstract, which describes the intentions of the authors and the subject of the article. This abstract indicates that the authors are presenting their interpretation of an important work by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, Women and Economics. Another feature of scholarly articles is where they are published. This article is published in Review of Social Economy. If we Google this title, we find that this publication is an academic journal published by Taylor and Francis, one of the most prominent scholarly publishers. The journal's website describes its editorial policies, including peer review. That the journal is peer reviewed means that the articles it contains undergo a formal review process involving other scholars who read and judge those articles to be relevant to the field and that their research is sound. Another feature of a scholarly article like this one is the extensive use of other resources concerning the topic. When we scroll to the end of the article, we find a works cited section that lists references to these other resources. Other articles might call this section the bibliography or references section. The authors use these resources to situate themselves within a larger scholarly conversation about this topic by engaging with and citing peer-reviewed sources like this in your own research, you are participating in the scholarly conversation as well. Now that we have an understanding of what scholarly, peer-reviewed resources are, we can focus on finding them. Your research begins at the University Library's website, which can be found at library.louisville.edu. The library's website has two key strengths that will make your research more effective than research you might do using internet search engines. One, the library will give you greater access to scholarly resources. These resources are expensive and your tuition dollars enable the library to purchase access to them. Though you may be able to find some of these resources with internet search engines such as Google, you will often run into a paywall and not be able to read whole articles for free. Another advantage of the library is that its databases are curated by subject specialists who have decided that the resources the database contains are relevant and useful for academic research. By comparison, an internet search engine will comb the web for any occurrence of the search terms you use and thus produce potentially millions of results, and it will be difficult to limit those results. Library databases produce fewer results and also provide tools to further limit those results so that you can make them more manageable. Before using the library's databases, it's good to develop a general search strategy by deciding upon a simple set of key words. Let's say you have chosen to research Charlotte Perkins Gilman's novel, Her Land, and its place in the tradition of feminist utopian literature. The keywords you will want to use for your search will be the most important ideas and concepts from your topic. In this case, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, Her Land, and Feminist Utopian Literature. 
These keywords are a good start, but it is a good idea to consider both some broader and narrower terms as well in case your initial search produces only a small number of results or a very large number. Some broader terms would include simply feminism, utopia, and literature. Some narrower terms might include feminist literature and utopian literature. Doing research is a skill, and finding the best resources requires flexibility and persistence. Sometimes it requires trying different combinations of broad and narrow keywords until you find what you need. This may seem daunting at first, but you will find that it gets easier with each research project you try. It will also be helpful to consider what subject area your topic falls under. The library's resources are organized around academic subject areas, so you will need to think about what subject areas are relevant to your research topic. Ask yourself, what kind of researchers are likely to have done work on Gilman's Herland? Historians, literature scholars, and women's studies scholars are likely to have done work on this topic. Now that you have developed your search strategy, you can apply it to finding sources through the library. If you are working at home when doing your research, it is a good idea to begin by logging in the library's website so you are recognized as a member of the U of L community who should have access to the library's databases and their full text content. Go to Accounts at the top right side of the screen and click Off Campus Login. Enter your ULink ID and password here. The best place to get started finding scholarly, peer reviewed articles is our subject guides, which can be found on the left side of the page under Quick Tools. The subject guides categorize library databases by subject area making it easier for you to find the most relevant resources for your research topic. Remember that we identified historians as one type of scholar likely to be interested in Gilman's Herland. When we click on the History Subject Guide, we find that three databases have been recommended, with a link for even more databases to consider. If you hover your cursor over one of the database links, a little box appears to inform you about the kinds of information found in this database and about its time scope. Since in your class, your particular research project can be on any number of different topics, including not just novels, but movies, television shows, and other kinds of texts, I'm going to use EBSCO Academic Search Complete, which is a general database that covers a broad range of academic topics. You can find EBSCO Academic Search Complete and other multidisciplinary databases on the Any Topic Subject Guide. The database opens to a search page that includes three search boxes. We can now enter the keywords we have identified from our search strategy. We'll enter Charlotte Perkins Gilman in the first search box, Herland in the second, and Feminist Utopian Literature in the third, and then click Search. This search produced zero results. However, this does not mean that no one has written on this topic. Rather, it just means that we need to rethink how we should search. And since we have developed a search strategy with many broad and narrow keywords, we can easily do so. This time, let's try Charlotte Perkins Gilman and the broader terms utopia and feminism. This search produced just seven results. This is a very manageable set compared to the over half million results produced by a similar Google search. Since this is such a small set of results, it is easy enough to just begin scrolling through the titles to look for articles that appear relevant and interesting for our topic. But as I scroll down through this list, take a look at the left side of the screen. Academic databases offer many tools for refining and limiting your search results which is especially helpful if your search produces more numerous results. If your research paper requires that you use only academic sources, you can further limit this search to just those kinds of sources by clicking the scholarly peer-reviewed journals box. Or you can further refine your search using other criteria, such as full text availability and publication date. 
The fourth article in this list looks particularly relevant and interesting. Let's take a closer look. Click the article title in order to access more information. The next page presents lots of information about this article, including a list of subject terms. You can use such subject terms in addition to the keywords you have already brainstormed for other searches. Also included on this page is an abstract. It is always a good idea to read the abstract to get a quick overview of the article. This will enable you to decide if the article will be useful to you without having to read the whole thing. If you decide that this article is indeed relevant to your research topic, you can start reading it by clicking the HTML or PDF links on the left side of the screen, or you can save it to read later by clicking one of the various options on the right side of the screen. These options include saving it directly to your computer, a flash drive or Google Drive, emailing yourself a copy, or just printing a copy. Another useful option on the right side of the screen is the Cite button. Click this to get a citation in any of a number of different citation styles, including MLA and Chicago styles. You can copy and paste the citation into your research paper, but be sure to check the citation to make sure everything is correct. Though the EBSCO database has full text access to a great many of the articles it finds, in some cases, it provides only bibliographic information. When we go back to our search results, notice that the first article in the list, which also appears particularly relevant, has no links to HTML or PDF full text. Instead, there is the Find It at UofL button. Though EBSCO may not have access to the full text, it is possible that another database that the library subscribes to does. In the case of the first article, the library has access to it via the Project Muse database. Unfortunately, sometimes the library does not have access to an article, but in that case you can still request the article via our Interlibrary Loan service. Click the Request Item through Interlibrary Loan button, fill out the form to place a request, and we will try to get the article from another library. We'll send you a PDF copy of the article, usually within five days. If you do not find enough relevant articles from one database, you can replicate your search in another database to find more. You can search any of the recommended subject-specific databases on the relevant subject guides. Remember, in developing our research strategy, we identified history, literature, and women's studies as relevant fields of study for our topic, and each of these has its own subject guide. You will use the same strategy of keyword searching when you use these other databases. Once you are comfortable working with one database, searching another one should be easy. Each database may look a little different, but the basic functions are the same. This is enough for now to get you started looking for articles. In a second video, I will demonstrate another method for searching for articles and then discuss searching for books. Remember I noted that doing research is a skill that you develop. Your skill will grow and become more effective with each research project you undertake as you apply your experience doing one project to another project. But you don't have to do it all alone. UofL librarians are available to help you be successful in your research. If you click the Ask a Librarian link at the right side of the library's homepage, you will find a number of different ways to communicate with a librarian and receive help. You can chat with a librarian from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on weekdays. Alternatively, you can email a question or call one of the six individual U of L libraries. These options are useful for relatively simple questions, but you can also schedule an appointment with a librarian for more in-depth help. Thank you for your attention and good luck with your research.